Hello guys, grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this is going to be a response to uh, Sidewalk's um, response to me, and I do want to thank you for, for making that response. Let's get to work. Response. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your day to do that and attempt to answer my questions. Uh, you pretty much answered my questions in a way that I would have expected your typical Christian to, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm sorry, but those answers were very simplistic, and, and it's exactly the type of thing that you'd hear, the, the type of soft... Um, God can do anything type of answers, and, and I'll, I'll touch on that. I'm not just going to say that, but your first um, point was that most of the Christians that you know that are good Christians uh, became that way because they questioned their faith, and through self-questioning, they were able to discern that their faith uh, was in fact, well, that, that their faith in fact suited them. I think I need to re reiterate on that a bit. Um, I was saying that I think the strongest Christians, um, and for me the good Christians, are the ones who follow Christ and his teachings, and so therefore would go out and make disciples of all nations, love their enemy, do good to those around them, love their neighbor, every you know, everything that Jesus taught. And I said, those are the ones that actually don't just take it by blind faith, because we don't find any proof of that in the scripture, to just take things on faith, uh, as that saying goes. It's that, actually, the Bible says to test all spirits, to seek out Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. To look deeper into things and not just on the surface. And so those who do look deeper actually realize that what is, what's going on here, uh, the scriptures best explains not only the situation of man, why the world is the way it is, how come everything exists instead of nothing, why are we created moral with a consciousness yet there's so much evil anyways i could list forever all these things uh, how to best deal with guilt is another one um uh, the existence of christ and his resurrection and so forth but it gives it makes them the the strongest to uh hold up and stand firm for the faith. I notice the people that just sort of, yeah, just sort of kind of believe, uh, don't do anything. And really are kind of useless with their faith. I mean, what's the point of believing that if, if you're not going to do anything with it? And uh, Jesus' parable of the ten talents he gives to various people is a good example of, of you know, let the talents represent people's faith. <laughs> you show me your faith, I'll show you my works. Can we have faith without works? As James uh, was saying. And, well, your first... Um point in saying that my Christian bias was automatically derived from my Christian school experience. Well, actually it wasn't. Um, as a matter of fact, I never based my Christian beliefs around what my Christian teacher said. I had my own uh, religious beliefs and I, I read the Bible myself. As I mean, we studied the Bible in school. And we didn't uh, study it for metaphor, or we didn't study anything but, you know, the flesh and bones Bible. And we were not taught it in a manipulative way. 
um, we were taught to be very open about it. The problem was uh, they took the Bible absolutely literally, and to be a real Christian, the Bible says that that's what you must do. You must take it and accept it. No, 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 no. Um, it actually doesn't say that. To be a real Christian, you have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and believe that he uh, died and rose again for your sins. Uh, and you have to believe that he is Lord. You're, you're trying to mix, and I notice a lot of atheists do that, um, the doctrine of inerrancy with uh, the doc like the doctrine of salvation or or, or another doctrine uh, no you don't uh, there's a lot of people who believe in the whole Bible yet have complete false doctrines similarly there's a lot of people that don't believe in all of the Bible yet follow Christ so uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that that's that's actually false what you're saying Um uh, it's a combination of the two, but even still, you don't have to believe in all of the Bible if you don't want to. But to be a Christian, you have to believe in uh, all of what Christ did for you and f stay true to his teachings. Now, like, some liberal cr Christians um, will take, like, the founding of Israel as something that Jewish people just made up. Uh, like the uh, Roman story for Romulus and Remus. And for the word of God. And unfortunately, that's something that I'll never be able to do. You see, men wrote the Bible, just like every other book. And even if God told these men what to write, uh, these men are the vessel filtering the words of a perfect creator. They're not going to come out quite as they went in. In other words, when you have men with human flaws uh, writing a book, no matter what, it's going to have flaws. Well, great point. And actually, a lot of people don't understand this, and I know a lot of people, a lot of Christians say the Bible is the word of God. Well, that's actually not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the word of God made flesh, John 1, uh, verse 1 to 3. But the Bible, rather, is inspired by God and is is useful for teaching and training in righteousness and training people how to draw near to God and it contains the words of God where God spoke through to prophets and it has divine commands of God some for certain situations some general rules to follow And others direct commands that everyone who believes uh, in Jesus must follow, like to love your neighbor as yourself, or to love God with all your body, heart, mind, and soul. Nothing is perfect, and nothing that man can create is perfect. Um, I'm sure that you would agree with me from a Christian standpoint. If God's perfect, certainly we could never replicate something perfect. So to say that the Bible is the perfect word of God, it's kind of a conundrum because... Well, if the Bible um, is God-inspired, as we say, then he certainly ordained what was going on with it, and... Uh, would keep his word uh, or keep the the words that are in it that are that he spoke together and in its original context and uh, it, I think that you're you're trying to mix a few doctrines together with the inher uh, inerrancy doctrine and I would um, 
I would suggest that you make a video about some of the problems you think are in the Bible and why for you it can't be the Word of God, where, where you think men kind of muddled in with things. Stay tuned for part two.